um, affected my internet, so I'm going to call them today um, because it's been doing that since the big storm, and maybe it, it kind of leaned on my um, my tower out there in a way. So if we go out, I know you want to let me know that we're out. But anyway, that's what I was saying. I was talking about the, the Women's Summit that's coming up starting on Wednesday night. I was talking about the Women's Summit that's coming up on this Wednesday night. Uh, so it's going to be starting in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The flyer is below. And um, if you're anywhere near that area, if I were you, Bumblebees, all of my women of God, uh, meet me there. Uh, sitting is limited, so make sure you get there early. And I believe it's going to be powerful. And I am... Um, the Lord dropped that in my spirit, and uh, I put in a phone call to Apostle uh, Regina Martin, and she's going to do uh, uh, that particular summit with me. Uh, it was something that God had put on my heart, and I couldn't wait till next year to do the big international one. So I decided to to uh, do it with her, and she is um, somebody that I believe that God is doing some great things in her life, and. Um, all of my, my spiritual daughters, they're in training. And um, I believe that when you are a real mother and a real mentor, uh, you don't hate on your children. You, you, you show them how to be successful and you show them how to do it. And you don't do that just by, uh, just by uh, word of mouth. You know, um, people love to, as my dad used to say, throw rocks and hide your hand. Uh, in other words, you don't, you don't want nobody to really know in public that um, that you are helping to steer somebody's life. And so a lot of people can say a lot of things in private that they won't own up to in public. And so the difference with me is I have one face. And uh, it, it, it's pretty much of a job keeping this one straight and honest and full of integrity. And um, I don't know how people manage two faces and three faces. I just don't know how you do it. Um, but um, when God calls me to somebody, I could see your destiny and I can see where God has taken you and um, the Lord doesn't reveal things to you that he doesn't plan for you to personally do anything about it whether or not it's prayer or whether or not it's um, you getting in the trenches and uh, real mothers and real mentors they get in the trenches with you they don't stand back and say well I, I just don't like the way you did that and I just think you should well then show them how to do it and so I have a, a group of spiritual daughters and we're getting ready to have um, a private summit coming up. And uh, some of you will be on that list and it's for people that is in ministry and it's private. And uh, I'm not going to accept uh, more than 200 students and these would, this would be a registered affair later on. And um, it's an intense teaching for women who are on that front line and you are already in ministry and you already have something established. We just want to teach you how to tweak it. You know, I want to give you the keys to my own success. And so um, it's time for all of us to get in the trenches. And it's time for us to understand that it's all hands on deck because we all are on the same side. And so, you know, I got some some of my daughters out there, uh, Melissa Fumby and Lady Bolton and, and, and several of them. You know, I don't want to start naming them by name because they would talk about mother and you can call my name. You know, because they can be spoiled sometimes like that. But, you know, these these are women that I, I, I can see tremendous things in. You know, uh, uh, Danielle McCoy Williams, uh, just people that, that I see. The, these are young women that are on the brink of something. Eb Ebony Ham and Jackie Fleming and, and, and women that, that are doing it. And, and I don't want people to stand afar off and say, oh, you know, I wish I knew Dr. Bynum. You know, I wish she would help me. But I'm here to do what God has called me to do in the lives of all women. And so we're, we're jumping that off with this summit coming up and you want to be there. Now, let's get ready to go into today's lesson because it is a powerful one. And the Lord was dealing with me and have been dealing with me about this prompted faith and about this urged on by faith. Um, and we're going to get our whole time. We got shut off, but we're going to go the whole distance. So you don't have to be fearful of whether or not I'm going to still um, give you your whole lesson. I am. So it's now 
I started that at 17 after, so we're going to go to 17 after so we can make sure that you get your time. Um, the Lord's willing. The Lord's willing. If he finish, I'm feeling I'm finished. Um, I came across this and I was thinking in my spirit um, about really, really, really making sure that all of you on this page really get clarity on this whole faith thing because when you understand it the way the Lord and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm praying for revelation I, I'm praying that that the Lord would really 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 reveal to many of you what God is saying and and and, and open up your spirit so you can hear it open open up your spirit so you can hear it and and, and somebody say well how do I know when my spirit is open? And how do I get my spirit open to believe God? We were talking about how this weekend when, when, when Mother Stax um, was one of my spiritual mothers and, and Mother May Dupree, when they were praying for me and somebody said to me, you know, Dr. Bynum, you just opened up and just took it. It's not like you... And, and I said, they said, well, that, that's something because everybody can't do that. Everybody can't open their spirit up for faith or open their spirit up to receive an impartation or download from God. How do you do that? Well, in um, this book that I'm finishing up, my watch, uh, I've been, I worked on it this weekend and just doing the Sabbath, just spending time with the Lord. And it was a sweet presence. Um, while the Lord was revealing some things to me in that book. And the thing that I came across um, was how a person get their spirit open. And the Lord began to, to show me that, begin to reveal that, 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 that the openers of our spirit, the openers of our spirit is called... Um, objects of prayer it's called objects of prayer and how i get my spirit open i need an object of prayer in order to get an audience with god and i don't want to jump off too soon because i'm really full today um what is an object an object of prayer is like it's like a can opener it's like when you go into the kitchen and you get a can opener and you want to open up a can of soup. And so you start, you know, that that can opener becomes the object of the opener. Now, this is what's going to bless you. And this is how it was revealed to me. That the object of prayer is the only thing that can cause you to take a inward dive. It's the only thing that can cause you to go into yourself because everything else about you is external. Where you work, where you go to school at, la la, woo woo woo. It's all external. And it is very possible for us to live those external lives without ever having to really face that inward life. That inward life. And sometimes when things happen, and, and, and I shared this with, uh, with Mother Dupree when the service was over with, and she was saying, you know, I haven't, we hadn't seen you in so long, and, 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 and we missed you. It had been some, you know, a few years. And, and, and I said to her, I said, you know, when, when Mother Boyd passed and, you know, Bishop Stax went on to be with the Lord and Pastor Curlin was gone and, pa and Bishop, Bishop uh, um, uh, Pastor... Collins was gone, and, and then my dad left, and then my godfather left, and then Pastor Boyd left. It, 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 I said it felt like everything was just wiped out. You know, everybody that was my mother and my father within a five-year period or so was all gone. And I said to her, when I would see you on, on, on YouTube or, or television or somebody would have her, and I would see Mother Stacks, I said it, it, it was like I had to shut it down. 
I had to, I had to kind of turn my head because I couldn't, I would not allow myself to internalize it. I would not allow myself to face it because it was too painful to face. And so sometimes we can deal with things from a point of it being too painful for us. That, you know, I'm keeping it 100 because that's all I know how to do. I, can, I can't teach you by, by using superficial stuff. And that's why I don't mind being on Front Street all the time. Because if my life and my life experiences is going to bring you clarity, then, it, you know, it's neither here or there. We, 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 we put way too much interest on it. We, 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 we just overdo it. You know, the whole, oh, I just don't want nobody to know how I feel. You know, we, it, it, sometimes it just gets to be way too much, way too much. When, when God allows you to have certain experiences so that your experiences can be a blessing and they can help people. And, and whether you tell it publicly or whether you tell it privately, but you're going to have to, to give your life experience. You're going to have to give your testimonies. Uh, uh, why? Because that's how you overcome him. By the blood of the lamb and by the words of your testimony. That's how you, 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 you stay free from the bondage of him. Are you hearing that? Did that just help somebody? So, you know, just stop all of that. You know, I, I don't care about that. You know, I, I live my life out loud with a microphone. Okay. So, um, and it has helped millions of people. So, in, 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 in saying that, um, I was, I didn't want to deal with that. I, did, I, I didn't want to face that. And so sometimes... You can, you can create another life and another way of living things out by not internalizing stuff. And so then you can go on and you can really, you know, construct a new mindset about how you deal with things. And, and, and you can go on and, and keep going because you can put yourself in another mindset that says we don't venture down that road. We don't go there. And you have the ability to do that about a lot of things, about sin, about things that you just refuse to, to, to ever indulge in. Again, you just say, mm -mm, that door shut. And you can mentally and emotionally shut that door. But if in fact you understand that even though you shut the door doesn't mean the content behind the door has gone anywhere. And one day you're going to have to deal with it. And one day you're going to have to face that. So these things that we, we, we have to encounter and that we have to face, they become our can openers. They are the things that allow you to get behind or get to a place where you can be open to the Lord because you have an opener. You have something now that is requiring you, that is requiring you to now turn and go in. You've lived your life already on the outside, but when it's time for God to have an audience with you, he will then begin to reveal to you those openers. And so the blessing is sometimes you think it's trouble and sometimes you think it's problems and you don't understand why Jimmy acted like this and you don't understand why so-and-so is sick like this or you don't understand why this situation is like that. Well, because when you used to, the humanism, our humanism, it, it is used to helping us to ignore problems and ignore things that, that, that brings us pain and brings us hurt or, or makes us feel uncomfortable. But sometimes people, the very thing that you're running away from is your gift from God because it is your authentic right, your authentic right to have an audience with God because it becomes your opener. It is the thing that, 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 that causes you to go inside out of desperation now and say to the Lord, I need to talk to you. Wow, y'all. Wow, y'all. That's the thing that says to the Lord, I need, to, I need a dialogue with you. As long as you think you all right, as long as you feel like you, you cool, it's cool, I, that, that, you know, I'm, I'm all right. I'm good. Then that intimate 
relationship with God. You would never have that. You would never have that. Because he's interested in what is in your heart. Not just what's on your mind. Because your mind will change. But that thing that's in your heart, whether it's, it doesn't matter what it is, it, it, it's, it, it's weighing in there. And when it's time for you to transition into understanding, when it's time for you to transition into that which has not been revealed, because everything that comes in our lives, it has a revelation sitting in it. Like I got this pretzel on my desk. If I put this pretzel in my hand, it's got a revelation in it. My hand has a revelation in it. If I keep holding this pretzel in my hand like this, if I just keep this pretzel in my hand, and the, I'm going to open it up and let you see the pretzel. If I just keep this pretzel in my hand like this and keep my hand shut, and my hand is sealed tight. Now, I got to wash my hand, right? Right? I do. So if I go in the bathroom right now and I wash my hand or I put some water in my hand and I'm, I'm still, I still got this in my hand. After a while, the fibers of this pretzel is going to break down. It's not going to be in the structure that it was. So if I don't open my hand up and get rid of this pretzel, it's going to break down. If I keep my hand closed, if I take my hand closed then the pretzel is going to break down into another substance. After a while, if I don't get that out of my hand, it's going to uh, uh, start to have a bacteria. Then the bacteria is going to start eating through my skin. Because why? I'm not giving my hand air. My hand was not meant to be locked shut like this with a substance inside. So now my hand is going to start stinking. And now my hand is going to get infected. And what is that going to cause? That's going to cause me to start acting evil. That's going to start me. It's going to change my original personality. It's going to make me act like something that I, that I don't normally act like. It's going to make me short-tempered. Because I can't hardly get myself dressed and this thing stink. I can't open up my hand. I can't, I can't put my earrings on by myself. And now what is going on? What is the next phase, people? The next phase is I need help. Help me zip my dress. Help me put my jeans on. Help me put my skirt on. So now you become that person that always need help. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. This, this one, I need this one to help me, help me, help me. Why? Because I've inconvenienced my life with what shut up in my hand. Because you may think it's just in my hand, but they're long enough, it'll change your life. Am I helping anybody today? Is anybody being helped today? And that's why you cannot keep things locked up in your heart. You cannot. Because after a while, it turns into something else. And then it turns into bitterness. And then it turns into resentment. And then it turns into why God? And then it turns into, Lord, why you let this happen? Because now you're going out of the lane of faith. And now you're headed into the lane of reasoning. And when you go into the lane of reasoning, now you become an enemy against faith. Now what you are experiencing is warfare. Did anybody just get clarity of anything I just said? Now what I have is warfare. Self-created warfare. Because I refuse to take the object and make the object my entrance into God and God's entrance into me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's what it is. It's the opportunity for God to inherit. My God, I thank you. I felt that. It's the opportunity for God to enter into my situation. That's how he get in it. He gets in it because I have an opener. He gets in it because I have a situation. He gets in it because I have a problem. My God, my God. And when he wants to show himself mighty, when he wants to show himself real, when he wants you to recognize that I'm God and you're man, you will get an object. And that object will provoke you to let God in. And when God comes in, then the Lord deals with everything. Now what you have is a life of prayer. 
Now you don't understand why God just don't wipe all of all your troubles at one time. Because I desire for you to have a life of prayer. I, not for you just to pray. But my desire is that you will commune with me always. And so if everything was always wonderful, you wouldn't have a reason to always talk to me. Because you're not that grateful by nature. Good Lord, he just said something right there. We're not that grateful by nature. How many times have people given you a ride and you jump out the car and say, Oh, girl, all right, I'll see you later. And then th thought about it and said, I forgot to tell her thank you. How many times do you do things for your children? And you got you get ready to hand it to them and they say, Oh, thou mama. And you say, What you say? You snatch that thing back. You snatch it back until they say, Oh, thank you. All right, that's it. How many times have you watched people give your children things? And you have to talk about and say, to your kid, well, what do you say to Miss Watkins? Thank you. Why? Because we have to be made to be grateful. So we're not naturally grateful like that. So God can't trust us. He can't trust that you could just live a life with no problems, no nothing, because you're not that grateful. Matter of, matter of fact, you'll become arrogant. And then you start acting like you have some sense of entitlement. Like life is supposed to be like that. No, the Lord desires for you to commune with him. He desires for you to talk to him. He desires for you to be one with him. He desires that that which I created will depend upon me for the spirit of creation at all times. That's why I built you with limitations. I built you with limitations. So that which is not available to you, you have the potential through my spoken word to make it available to you because I desire to continue to be the creator in the life of man. Are you hearing that? Anybody listening to that? I still got my hand balled up and I can, always, I can smell the pretzel now because ain't no heat in there. I can smell the pretzel through my fingers. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? No, ma'am, you got to. You have to. You have to. That's your, that's, your, that's your opening. That's your walk. That's your interest in. You don't have to worry. Let me help you with something. You ain't got to worry about talking about, I just wondered. You know, I was just praying the other day. And I just wondered if the Lord heard me. Are you kidding me? You got a can opener. You got an opener. Are you serious? I wonder if the Lord really see what I'm going through. No, you got an opener. And when you have, hi, yeah, thank you, Jesus. When you have an opener, the Bible said, he's talking to the righteous now, not to somebody that's teeter-tottering and don't know whether or not you want to know God. He said, when the righteous cry, the Lord heareth them, and he delivers them out of all of their troubles. When the righteous cry, the Lord hears them. Well, why do I have a reason to cry if I don't have an object? How do I get to deliverance without my object? Did he just download that? Yes, he did. How do I get to deliverance from my family? Except the Lord revealed to me their objects. Oh, my God. How does the Lord... Allow me to deal with situations that he would show me. Because when he shows you things, it is your permission. When he shows you things, it is, it is your, 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 your awakening moment to the authority that he has given you. Now, I just said something right there. It is your awakening moment to the authority that he has just given you. In other words, I showed that to you. Watch this. I show this to you because you have the ability in you to walk this thing out. You have the ability to do something about this. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a mechanism that I've invested in you for this one. Ah, uh, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. It's just like me working here, uh, when I'm doing certain things and I have certain workers, I send certain people to do certain things. I don't send everybody to do everything. Because some of them, though they may be good over here, they like fudge it over here. So no, you don't send them to do everything. You know the ability of your children. 
and you know the ability of the people that work around you. And so some people you don't send to do nothing because you know it, it'll just frazzle them if I sent them there. But there's others that you could send them to do something and they can straight chase an ambulance. And that's the inside laugh with my, with my staff. They can straight chase an ambulance and not be afraid. Are you hearing that? That some people, you don't give them certain things. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Like one of my sisters called us the other day, and, 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 and me and my five siblings, we just had a hollering, laughing time. Because one of my sisters just got a badge and, and getting ready to get a gun license. And I said, oh God, I would never argue with you again. Oh you win, hands down. You with a gun? God forbid. No, no, mm -mm. no. Because you know how sometimes you got that thing with your siblings where you just want to get your point across, you know, and we going to get our point across. Oh, oh, my point is gone. I don't have a point. You all the points. You get ready to get a gun? Mm-mm. We good. We good. We good. So you know, it's, it's just like that. You, you, you have to know the ability of certain people around you. And, and that's how the Lord does us. That's how God does us. When he, when he puts things on you. When he calls you for certain things. When he calls you to certain people. When circumstances just end up in your lap. It's not to punish you. It's not to make you feel like, oh God, what the devil is going on. You have the ability your problem is you're riding, you done got in a vehicle with somebody who ain't got no faith, excuse my English, and you letting them take you through the park of reasoning. And y'all on y'all a joy ride. Talk about, girl, this is hard, ain't it? And girl, I know, and it just be too much sometimes. No, 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 no. You in the wrong car. You in the wrong car. You know, when I was younger and we would ride the bus, now the bus have bus stops. But, you know, the bus didn't used to have bus stops. It had, it, it had a place where you, you could pick up the bus, you can get on the bus. But if you went three blocks up and there was no bus stop, you would pull the lever and the bell would ring to let the driver know at this next corner, let this person off. Are you hearing me? And some of y'all done got on that bus of reasoning. And you headed down the wrong street. And you need to pull the lever and say, I'm getting off at this next stop right here. Because if God showed me this, and if God has spoken this to me, and if this ended up in my life, and if this ended up in my family, then I can handle this. Then that, oh my God, thank you God. He said, there is no temptation. Such as is common to man that God with the temptation won't make a way for you to escape. In other words, there is nothing that will come at you or sit on you or that you would be approached by. That God with this thing won't give you an avenue out. Are y'all hearing that? Are y'all hearing that? Oh, did you know what? I, Dr. Bottom is here and I'm just, you know, I listen, listen, I'm, I just, I can't take no more. I can't, I can't, I can't deal with this. I can't handle this. Of course you can. In the mind of reason, you can't. In the mind of faith, you can. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so what does the scripture say about that? Here we go now. Here we go now. Are y'all listening? Are you all with me? Are you all with me? The Bible says in, um, who, God, I love you, Jesus. It says that, um, I want to go to this scripture here. Romans 10 and 17. And I, and I went to it because I want to read what it says in the Amplified Bible. I want you to see the tone that's in the Amplified Bible. 
Faith comes from hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. Are you hearing that? So faith comes from hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching. The preaching. The preaching of the word of God. The message of Christ. The message of Christ being the word of God. So here it is. My faith will come to me when I have reason, when I have reason to need it. Oh, Jesus. You just don't walk around with triggered faith in your pocket. Faith ain't like a wallet. But you just, you know, I just, I just walk around. I don't need it. I, I, I don't need it, but I, you know, I just walk around with it. Mm -mm. My faith is increased when my object is bigger than what I can handle. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. He just said something right there. My faith is increased. My faith. Well, you know, I, Peter said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Because, because now, now I got an issue here, Lord. I got an issue here. And now this, I was over here believing you to be Jesus and watching you do miracles. But now that you're talking about going to the cross and me eating of your flesh and drinking of your blood and, you know, and, and then you're going to raise yourself up in three days. Now, 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 I got a problem because now I'm looking at a situation that's bigger than, that's bigger than my reasoning. Now I'm looking at something that's bigger than what I can understand. Now I'm looking at something that's bigger than what I can comprehend. Now I'm looking at something that can't nobody explain it to me. Now I'm looking at something that makes no sense. I can't put two and two together and end up with four. I'm looking at something now that don't add up. And I'm looking at something now is how in the heck do you think I'm going to do this? And where do you think I'm going to get the money from? And how am I going to do this? And my body is like this. How are you giving me visions and dreams and I keep being sick over here? How is it that you're speaking one thing to me, but I'm seeing another? So now, Lord, I believe you. But help the part of me that can't understand that reason does not have the ability to help me to comprehend. Why? Because I cannot comprehend this because these things are discerned. These things are revealed. And to accept I am spiritual, I will never know it. He will hide it from my mind. He will hide it from my reason. Why? Because if he did not hide it, and it did not, and it's not revealed to me by way of an object, by way of a can opener, by way of an internal key, then I will always have reasoning about my life and I don't have to need God. Good Lord, have mercy. God, you teaching something today and I don't have to need you. I don't ever have to talk to you. But when things happen and circumstances hit my plate and I can't comprehend this and I can't deal with this, Got a friend of mine that's facing something right now. One of her, her sister-in-law is, is in the hospital and she had tumors and they got the tumors off of her brain and one came back and it's rapidly moving and they're giving her days to live. And we can't understand this. You got three children and Lord, we don't get this. We don't get this. And so if you don't, if you don't reveal your mind to us, thank you, Jesus. Then the grief alone will overtake us. If you don't, if you, if you don't give us a revelation about what it is you're trying to accomplish in us, then the worry alone will make our hair fall out, will cause us to lose weight, will give us ulcers, will cause us to have cancer being birthed in our body, will have us with high blood pressure and low blood pressure and sugar out of control. If you don't give us a revelation about where we are sitting, 
If you, God, don't step in and help us to understand all of this craziness that we see. Because you're the only one that can interpret the craziness as a blessing. You're the only one that can interpret the craziness as all things work together for the good. To them that love God. To those that are called according to his purpose. Oh, God, you are able to reveal it to us in a way that, oh, God, we understand. That you know that the way that we take. But when you have tried us, we're coming out as pure gold. Oh God, we are able to get it revealed to us to the point that it is translated into something that we can operate in and live above and go through and come out with the victory. Is God teaching to anybody today? You need a translator. Because this, my brothers and sisters, this, my little bumblebees, is another language. It's no different in, 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 in you going to Paris and now they passing a law. If they were to pass a law that nobody can come into Paris and speak English, then everybody have to speak French. You would be a lost poodle, a lost poodle in Paris. Because you got to always stop and ask somebody, can you interpret this for me? Can you interpret what it means? I, I want some milk. It's just simple things. I'm talking about little things. Now we've gone to little things and then you ask her, can you tell me how to tell them that I want some cornflakes? Can you tell me how to tell them that I want some pizza? Can you, can you tell her to say for me that I need, and, 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 what, and, what's, and what's happening? What's hap I don't know if you've had that experience before, I have. And then you go and ask somebody to say something and you go, you go can you ask them, um, tell them that I want uh, some spaghetti and I want some meatballs that... And they go on this long, and I have to say, you saying way too much. Because I know I didn't just ask all that. I just asked, can you tell them if I can have some spaghetti and meatballs? And you just went, and they say, Kore, That's too much talking. That's way too much. I didn't ask all that. Because I guarantee you, in some of that interpretation, you done added something that I did not say. You done expressed something that I wasn't expressing. See, that's the danger when you want somebody else to translate for you. That's the danger of when you don't have a relationship with God. That's the danger when you don't have a prayer life. Because you got to always depend on somebody to interpret something for you. But this thing, this God world, this God place, this is another world. And no different than Italy. And no different than Russia. And no different than the Netherlands. And no different than Africa. And no different than China. No different than Japan. Are you hearing me? If you are from China, no different than America. They speak another language. And if we don't understand that this is what God is saying. That I speak another language. I don't speak English. I don't speak reason. I speak revelation. And if you're going to come and live in my country, you're going to have to learn revelation. Now, he done said something right there. Good God have mercy. Good God have mercy. No, 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 no. If you're going to visit here, that's one thing. Because you can visit. And I'll let somebody interpret to you what I'm trying to say to you. And you may get to run around the church one time. And you may get to wave your hands and have yourself a good old time in the Holy Ghost. But if you're going to live in this country, you got to be indoctrinated. If you're going to live in this country, you need a passport. If you're going to live in this country, you need authentic papers, which is my word. If you're going to live in the God world, if you're going to make this your lifestyle, you got to study the language. And the language is called revelation, not reason. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, are y'all hearing this? Because look at, look at, look at, look at, look at what the scriptures say. Oh, God. Hey, my shot, Woo, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. It says here in Romans 1 and 17. 
For in the gospel of righteousness. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? Oh, Dr. Bottom, I just want to be, I just want to get my life together. You, you, you can't without the gospel. Because the gospel is a righteousness. This is how I become righteous. I need this to become righteous. I don't become righteous because I feel righteous. Because there will be days that you are in righteousness and you don't feel like you're in righteousness. So God doesn't trust your feelings with righteousness. He only trusts the thing that the Bible said, heaven and earth will pass away. But this right here, this righteousness will still be here. Oh, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall forever stand. Are y'all hearing this? He said, for in the gospel of righteousness, which God ascribes is revealed, people. The language of revelation. Would you need an opener for that? You need a reason to consult the heavens. And that situation that you're dealing with right now is a goal now. It gives you access into that world. It gives you a passport into that world. It brings you before the face of God. Oh, God. Ooh. Who sees this? He says, For in the gospel of righteousness what God describes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Did y'all just see that scripture? That's a monster right there. That scripture is a beast right there. We're going to pick that one up right there tomorrow. Because I, I can't even start on this. I can't even start on this for real. I'll be on tomorrow. I cannot start. I can't. This right here. This right here ain't no joke. Are you hearing this? I'm going to read it one more time. For in the gospel 